Hi there, today I thought I'd do a quick rundown on how I make robot eyes, because it's rather interesting. We're going to start with a cylinder, and this represents either an eye stock or an eye socket in which you would insert a lens for your robot. And I'm going to go with 12 vertices, that tends to be smooth enough for most cases, for a low poly area or an area that would be visible from a great distance where it wouldn't matter so much that you have it look smooth, I would go with 8. And for most other cases, 12 is usually smooth enough. Even for large robots, I don't really see a need to go for anything uh, much more than 12, really. Okay, so I'm going to press 1 on the numpad to make sure I'm looking at the front here. And then I'm going to rotate this on uh, around the x-axis by 90 degrees to make it face forward. And by the way, I'm on Blender 2.79. If you're on Blender 2.8 or another version, or if you're not using Blender... The hotkeys might be different, and also, especially when it comes to switching modes like the uh, viewport shading to um, material and wireframe and stuff, I've changed my hotkeys. I don't even remember what the default is. There's like, you press Z and Alt-Z, Shift-Z, you'll get it eventually, or you can just use these. Okay, so with that out of the way, now we just need to get this, uh, get this to a reasonable size. So I'm going to scale it down, and then scale it on Y to make it sort of the size of an eye socket or what you'd expect a robot's eye socket to look like and then I want to flare the base out a bit so I'm going to select that and scale it out and to do that by the way you can press uh, you can hold alt and then click between two vertices to select the entire ring there if it doesn't know how your geometry is really structured if it's if it's got like weird connections then maybe sometimes it won't work but for a ring like this it should work Okay, so next, uh, first of all, I suppose we can delete the back because this is where the um, uh, the uh, socket would be inserted into a mesh or if you already had an existing area where the socket could be extruded from, uh, you know, the inside of the mesh would be empty anyway, hollow. Okay, so we select the front and now we need to add the area where the lens is going to be inserted into. So I'm going to press I to inset. And then also delete that face, or beforehand, actually, I'm going to press Shift-S to open the snap menu, move the cursor there so that whenever we actually do add the lens, it will be added in this area. And I'm pressing X to open the delete menu, by the way, to delete the face. You can also select this afterward if you uh, deleted it first. Okay, so now we need the lens. And we can start with a UV sphere. And for the segments, I go with 12. That would be the same number of segments as we had vertices for our uh, cylinder. And for the rings, I go for half as much. You can tell that here with 16 or even 12, we have some major rectangular uh, faces going on that just are a little bit inconsistent. This would be an unnecessary amount of detail in our rings. And if we take that down to, say... Oh boy, three is really bad. If we take it down to four, then you can see that you get the same result in the opposite direction. So if we go to half, I find that you get just about the right size. So if I were doing a low poly section, I would have eight segments and four rings. All right, so rotate that along, or around the x-axis by 90 degrees as well. Scale that down. And also, if you happen to be using a dome... Uh, you might want to enable the 3D cursor setting for your pivot point. In this case, it doesn't matter so much. Median point is fine because we're using a sphere, which is rather uniform. But I'm going to enable that and show you what would happen. Well, actually, you know, I'm going to enable that and see what would happen if I didn't. All right, so I'm going to shift uh, select those to remove them. And then I'm going to duplicate this with shift D just to show what would happen here. And if I scale this while pressing control, bam, it does not fit into the socket correctly. Uh, however, if we go to 3D cursor mode and scale control, bam, now it snaps correctly. Now for the sphere, it doesn't matter so much, but sometimes you do end up inserting a dome into something, especially if you don't want the back of your lens to be a sphere or a hemisphere. Chances are you're going to need to use that mode. All right. So, now that we have our sphere here, we can flip our normals so that we can see into it, scale it, control, snap. If you don't want to use the hotkeys for that, there is the snap button here in Blender 2.79 again, and you can use the vertex mode there. Alright, so now we have a lens that we can see through. We can see it from the side, but whenever we look to the front, we actually see the back of the lens instead, which is quite nice. That means we can add some details on the inside of the eye, some glares and uh, stuff like that. Uh, for now... 
we can smooth shade this model uh, so that we can see what it looks like when smoothed. It's pretty good. Already not too bad. If we add some color, it'd be fine. But now we need to add some more details. So I already have this selected, so I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I pressed um, B to open the box selection, and then I'm going to hold Shift to deselect the front or the back there so that we only have the front selected. I'm going to press, while this is uh, in 3D cursor mode, this is actually kind of important here, I'm going to press uh, Shift D to duplicate, and then I'm going to scale it so that we have a separation between the outside edge, which will represent sort of a Fresnel rim, sort of um, a nice bright outer edge, and then we have the inside, which represents sort of the darkness uh, that uh, where light doesn't quite make it through or whatever. And then we need this to not have a visible edge around here. So what I like to do for that is quite simply just go in, select that, scale it out, snap it, bam. And that's not too bad. And already you can see what the effect is trying to achieve via Blender's default shading here. It looks pretty good. I like the um, sort of glass-like effect you get. All right. So now I suppose we could do with a bit of color. So I'm going to go for the... Uh, front view in orthographic. I pressed 1 on the numpad for front, 5 for orthographic. Select all and project from view. And that will give us a flat forward projection. Alright, so for the texture, I have a texture prepared, which is just a um, basic couple of gradients, and we're going to set that here in the... Uh, what is this? What is this called? The... UV image editor. All right, so we have everything here, and the first thing I like to do whenever I assign a texture is go over and press this button here. This is the keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. Without that, uh, what you would have if I grab one face is only that visible in the uh, area here. However, if you have it selected and you click one face, you can drag that out separately, which is really nice. It doesn't affect the existing vertices also quite nice. Alright, so let us scale this down so we can actually put it into one of these uh, scale, I'm going to scale on X 0.01 so that we can put it into one of these gradients. Obviously if you texture in a different way, if you don't use gradients for texturing, you would have to, you know, darken things and lighten things uh, in however you feel like doing so but for me it's just moving up and down on the gradient to change the value. Alright, so that is our metallic color. And what we can do is also select the front here by holding Alt and clicking on the edge to select the ring here. And we can move this up to add a bit of direct lighting on the gradient. But what I also like to do is rotate that by 180 degrees to give a nice metallic shine to it. Maybe make it not quite uh, as high contrast. And there we go. A little bit brighter. Not bad. Very metallic. Pretty cool. All right, so now I'm going to go back into perspective and deselect that by pressing A, press Z, and then grab all the stuff on the inside, and then select all, or select uh, connected. I don't even know what that command's hotkey is. I have it assigned to my mouse, so I have no idea. All right, so we're going to move that over by grabbing with G, pressing X, and now we have it red. So we have a red uh, lens inside the metallic socket. And now that I'm looking at it from the front here, I can see that this socket doesn't have quite the flared base that I want. So I'm just going to quickly go into medium point mode and scale that out a bit to have a more flared uh, socket base there. Maybe even move it in a bit like that. Yeah, that's a little bit better, isn't it? I think so. All right, cool. So with that done, what we need is this front area here to be wider. Now, the problem is that we have to, again, deselect the back because they're... they're uh, not separated the geometry. Uh, what you can do is actually just make the front here a separate dome instead of the inside a separate dome and that would be easier I suppose. Okay, so we're going to go into face mode so that we can actually rip these away from the uh, vertices here if we were in uh, vertex mode. See this would happen and it would move the inside there. You can see the, the uh, glow there because they're connected but if we go into face mode while this button is enabled we can actually pull that away, rip it and move it up. Now, in a game engine, 
this is kind of important because uh, vertices can only have uh, one set of data. So one normal, one vertex color, that sort of thing. And if you have one vertex that has multiple of those, you know, one, instead of one, you have like two UV uh, coordinates assigned to one vertex in a game engine, that's actually going to be rendered with two separate vertices. So if you're looking for performance, don't split up your uh, meshes vertices too much like this, but we would have just separated them in geometry if we had to anyway for this because it's kind of imp important. Not something you have to worry too much about, but some, something to consider, especially if you use shadow biasing to uh, affect your shadow aliasing in Unity, for example, or Unreal Engine. Uh, these seams will separate the shadows whenever they are in engine, so it's something to keep in mind. Don't separate them if you don't have to. Okay, so I think the back... It might be dark enough, but I'm thinking I'm going to make it, uh, or maybe it's, maybe it's too dark. I'm going to move it up a bit like that so that it's a little bit brighter and that'll give us a little bit of leeway so we can add the darkness to the pupil okay so about the pupil and also an iris what we can do is select the back here and we can move that down or darken it in any other way you have in your texture editing and then that give us sort of that gives us sort of the hole this is where the light enters the lens and then gets processed sent to a cpu or whatever and then we can select the outside edge and give it a bit of color. You can move this somewhere else on the color gradient. Uh, I can sort of put it over here and then you get sort of the same effect you would have in a human eye. But I'm just going to leave it as it is, sort of a toony shading gradient like that. Sort of uh, banding. I think it looks pretty good, especially if you're going for a cartoony aesthetic. And you can see on the bottom here, we do have um, a nice uh, bright edge around here on the lens. And then the inside is darker. It's not even quite as dark as I'd like. So what I'm actually going to do is select just the front of the inside there and drag that down, which is going to rip it apart, but it'll make it also darker, which is kind of nice. I think I like that better. Yeah, and what also that does is it adds like a bright band on the inside, which kind of looks like uh, this metallic band on the outside. It kind of looks like it has depth on the inside as well. Like this is the inner wall, and then the uh, you're seeing the light uh, shining on the inner wall there. That's kind of what I like to think of it as, and I think that's a really cool effect. So I do like to darken the inside like that, just to make sure that effect does happen. Okay, so now for the glare, uh, the final effect that we really need to bring this all together. I'm going to select the back since it's a convenient circle. It's maybe a little bit too high poly, but whatever, I don't care. going to shift D to duplicate that and then press Y to move it on Y. And I'm gonna leave it inset a little bit toward the back so that we get some free parallax, but I'm going to scale it on Y, zero, to flatten it, like so. Scale it down a bit, <clears throat> move it up like that, and then brighten it by moving it up on the texture gradient like so. So that will give us a nice little light glare. And we can add a second one by just duplicating this like so, and then scaling it down a bit like that. Maybe that's your secondary um, bounce, your reflection from uh, the grass or whatever, and maybe this this glare, you would give it a different color because maybe it's reflecting some bit of the environment instead of the direct light from the sun or whatever synthetic light uh, source you happen to have, whatever it may be. Uh, maybe you would give it a little bit of a darker color because the gradient in this case is uh, on the bottom it is darker and on the top it is lighter, so maybe moving it down a little bit makes sense since it's closer to the bottom so that it's not quite as bright. That's good. Maybe you can separate it different uh, differently on the y-axis so that you have slightly different uh, parallaxing on that particular uh, glare, which is kind of nice. And if this is looking too flat to you, what you can do is either start with a dome to begin with or turn this into one by grabbing the poke here, which is what Blender refers to it if you generate it from a face. Uh, and I can just move that out like that. So. Uh, that would give us a point, and it's a little bit too pointy, and also here's a neat technique. If you have a point like this and you want to smooth it out, what you can do is actually subdivide the edges by simply selecting them using this uh, circle. By uh, You just press C and then click on the point, and that'll select all the edges. And then you can just use the subdivide command, like so, and that will give you a ring that you can then grab, scale, move around however you like to smooth it out. Pretty straightforward. There you go. And now it's not quite as fel uh, quite as flat. Uh, you can just use a sphere to begin with, and I've done that a few times, but it's a little bit too high detail, so sometimes from a distance you're really not going to notice anyway. And it might just be better to go with a circle. 
Okay, last touch. Uh, I'm thinking the sphere is often a little bit too round for a lens. Lenses might be a little flatter. Uh, I think for an eye, maybe this kind of works because it's got that sort of oval shape going on where it's um, poking out in the front. Maybe for a human eye, it makes more sense. For robot eye, I kind of like having it not be quite so pokey. So I'm going to grab all of the front vertices like this and then not have that one. All right. And I'm going to make sure I'm in medium point mode and not um, from the 3D cursor. Scale on Y and move down closer on Y to the back there. Scale maybe shift Y to make it not scale on Y to give it a little bit more of that poke. And maybe undo that. Yeah, that looks like a nice lens. That's the sort of lens you would expect on, say, like... Um, like contact, le contact lens, for example. I kind of like that sort of uh, general shape. It's pretty good. And I think that makes for a pretty solid eye for robot. Yeah. So I think we're done here for this particular video, this particular tutorial-y walkthrough sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to include the files that you can download and check out for yourself, including this uh, little texture here with a couple color gradients. Uh, thanks very much to all the supporters, be it new supporters, old supporters, current supporters, supporters on Patreon, itch, people who just follow the game. Thank you very much. Love you all. I will uh, talk to you, I suppose, in the next video.